Welcome, today we're diving into Azure Policy, Microsoft's powerful tool for governance at scale in the cloud. With Azure Policy, you can define rules that automatically enforce organizational standards, ensure compliance, and prevent misconfigurations before they even happen. Want to restrict which regions your team can deploy to? Make sure resources are always tagged correctly or block public IPs from being created. Azure Policy can do all that and more automatically. It's scalable, auditable, and works seamlessly across subscriptions, manager groups, and resource groups. Whether you're securing your environment, controlling costs, or staying compliant, Azure Policy puts you in control. Now you know what Azure Policy is and why it matters, let's take a closer look at how it actually works in practice. Azure Policy uses definitions, rules that describe what is and isn't allowed. These can be assigned at various levels, like subscriptions or resource groups, and they evaluate resource properties both at deployment time and on an ongoing basis. There are thousands of built-in policies and you can create custom ones too, tailored to your organization's exact needs. But what really makes Azure Policy powerful is how it enables proactive governance. Instead of cleaning up mistakes after they happen, you can stop them from happening at all. I'm going to open up my demo environment here. In the search box, type in policy, first result as you would expect. First page you'll come to is the main dashboard. It gives you a high level overview of everything that's going on around Azure policy and what you might have configured. As you can see here, things look pretty healthy, although with this being a demo environment, there isn't really too much going on. So you can see there are a couple of default assignments in here. These are created by Azure Security Center, which is a bunch of different policies that are used to audit the security posture of the tenancy. So they're built in Microsoft one that gets deployed when you enable Security Center on the subscription. I'll just go full screen so we can see a little bit more. So you see down the left hand side here we've got our menu there's kind of five my main areas we're going to concentrate on so here we have definitions so these contain the rules or logic behind your policies and initiatives um, as you can see there are many built-in definitions and you can also create uh, custom ones to meet your specific needs so there's two types that you will see we've got policy and this is just a single rule that evaluates conditions on the Azure resources. And then we've got initiative, also got a policy set, and that's just a group of multiple policies. It's useful for applying a compliance standard, something like ISO 27001, and the like, just kind of a, a larger subset of individual policies grouped together. Then we've got assignments. This is where you apply policies or initiatives to specific scopes like subscription or resource group or a management group. Assignment can include parameters to make the policy reusable. So something like allowed locations or tags that you'll see a little bit later on in the video. We've got exemptions. They're used to temporarily exclude specific resources from policy enforcement. That's uh, helpful when you know, you're dealing with legacy systems, transition periods, or kind of special cases where you don't want policies to apply to specific resources. And we've got compliance, pretty much a focus view of your current compliance state for your policies and initiative assignments. You can see which resources are compliant, non-compliant, and details about why they failed. And then lastly, we've got remediation. So that allows you to automatically fix non-compliant resources if the policy supports it and you can also create remediation tasks to bring existing resources into compliance so now we've seen the portal and know what the options are let's explore three of the most widely used policy types that bring immediate impact in real world environments so the first one we're going to do is enforce tags on resources. So this policy ensures that specific tags like environment, owner, or something like cost center are applied to all resources during deployment. You can either deny deployment if tags are missing or automatically add default values. It's useful for kind of helping with cost tracking, resource ownership, environment segregation. So for example, if you want to enforce an environment tag, so dev, test, prod, for example, it ensures resources are grouped correctly in reports and dashboards. So we'll open up our definitions here. So these are all the sort of built-in policies that you can pick and choose from and i'll we'll just search for require a tag as you can see there's, uh, there's a few to choose from so require a tag on resource groups require a tag and its value on resource groups require a tag on resources or require a tag and its value on resources what we'll be using here is require a tag on resources so we'll open that one up you can see the sort of underlying code that sort of goes into the policy what we want to do here is click on assign and then in this screen we can choose the scope so for this we're going to choose sandbox subscription you can optionally choose a resource group 
We won't do that in this case because we want to make sure that this tag policy applies to every resource that's either created or exists in the subscription as a whole. But you can, if you want to narrow it down the scope of it, choose a resource group. So select that. Exclusions again, you can select resources that you want to exclude this from or, or resource groups. And we're just going to leave this for now. The definition. So this is basically telling you, this will create an assignment, but it's telling you the, um, the definition that the assignment's based on. So that's require a tag on resources and then the version of that. So we'll just use the kind of standard version that's there. Now we'll give it a name. It defaults to the name of the policy, but we're going to change that. So I like to keep the name of the definition itself there and then just append onto the end of it what you're actually configuring. So for this, we'll do environment a description. You can add one there if you want. I won't for the purposes of this. And then the last kind of little switch you've got here is policy enforcement. So it can either be enabled, if you turn it off, disabled, essentially it goes into an, an audit mode. So the policy still runs, but it's not enforced. So if you try to create a resource without this tag, it will let you, but you can then, you know, run follow-up reports that will highlight any, uh, any, any resources that fail this policy or would fail it if it were enforced. So it's a good way to kind of view the effects of your policies before you actually enforce them. We'll en enable that for now. It's a pretty straightforward one. We know what the effects are going to be. So we don't need to be too cautious. Do next. So parameters, tag name. So kind of in the basic screen, we've already said we're going to require a tag on resources environment. So that's the name of the tag that we want to uh, enforce policy for. So we'll enter that into that. You can only do one tag per policy assignment. So if you did want to kind of create policies for other tags, you have to do them in separate assignments. You can't just do them all in one, unfortunately. Remediation. So if you want to enable your policy for re remediation, you have to create a managed identity for the for it to use so that it can it can kind of assume an identity in Azure and have the relevant roles and access required to make changes to resources. Um, for now, we're going to leave that one as it is. Uh, a non-compliance message. So it's kind of just a friendly reminder for anybody who's building resources. If it does fail, why it's failed and the reason for it. So cannot create resource missing and environment tag. Okay. Next, so just a quick summary of what we've set up there and create. So you see, it's pretty quick. Now go to our assignments. So we did previously have four, we've now got five and we can see there in the list, require tag on resources environment is now an assignment. Go into it. So you can see in here the parameters, can't really change this once it's been created. So if you did want to change that parameter value, uh, there might be a way to do it in the uh, in the shell actually, but if not, it's a case of just deleting and recreating. So now that's created, we go into assignments. We can see here there were four, there are now five, and we've got it in the list. Require a tag on resources environment. Click into it. Once it loads, we can see the details for what we've created. So the parameters for it, tag name, environment. You've got the options here. You can duplicate assignment. So if you wanted to create additional policies for tag enforcement, so if there were different tags that you wanted to make sure that we're assigned to your resources, we can duplicate this so it carries all the same definitions. I just need to tweak the, the parameter names. So it just helps speed things up. You can also view compliance and create exemptions and view the underlying definition for the policy itself. Uh, from here, delete it if you no longer require it and then edit it as well. So if you maybe wanted to change the scope or add an exclusion in here or change the actual parameter for the tag. So if maybe you wanted to add an addition to the end of the tag name or change it in some way, you can do that in here. Now we've got our policy. I suppose we should try and create a resource and see what happens when we do or don't add a tag to it. So I'll just do something really straightforward. So we'll create a new one. Uh, consumption plan. Make sure we choose the subscription that we've applied the policy to. I create a new resource group just to keep things tidy. Okay, so I suppose the best way to kind of see this in action is to not create a tag and see what it says. So it's just validating. Okay, so we can see straight away template deployment failed because of policy violation. Please see details for more information. Resource LA Stock Demo was disallowed by policy, request disallowed by policy. And then here, reason cannot create resource missing environment tag. So that's the description we added to it. Cool. Okay, so it's doing what we want it to do. So now we can go back, rectify that, and hopefully it should let us create it. There we go. And there's a logic app with the right tag. So we'll just go back to our policies blade. So we can see it's a little bit more red now. It's a bit more noise in the uh, in the dashboard. So whereas everything was okay before, we've now got 
detect some non-compliance issues. So we've got our assignment here, require a tag on resources environment, compliance state non-compliant, resource compliant zero out of 22. There are some resources that already existed in this tenancy and because they don't have the environment tag, straight away the, the policy centers uh, picked that up and is shouting about it. So that's a pretty basic policy around tagging. One other thing you can do that I won't go into too much detail on here is a definition to inherit a tag from the subscription if missing. So you could create an assignment for this, add the same tag on there, so environment, and even give it a value. So let's say you had to split your subscriptions up for dev, prod, test, UAT, and kind of set predefined tag values for the environment that you want all resources to inherit from the subscription. If you did have a bunch of things you'd already deployed before you started to use as your policy, let's say, you could put this one in place and then any pre-existing resources that have tag missing will just inherit whatever you set at the subscription level. The second demo we're going to do is around restricting which regions resources can be deployed to. So this essentially limits the allowed Azure regions where you can deploy your resources to, kind of prevents accidental or non-compliant usage of regions outside your approved list. So common in organizations needed to comply with uh, data residency laws, sovereignty requirements, or performance optimization. So, you know, only require for us, for example, UK South, North Europe, those sort of home regions. So we'll go back to policy and definitions and then we'll search for allowed locations okay different sort of ways you can do it again it's against either resource groups or resources so we'll just do it for resources for now same as before we'll assign the policy choose a scope so we'll choose our sandbox subscription no exclusions and then give it a name so we'll call this allowed locations uk self enabled so we get a choice of allowed locations so you can choose multiple for for this one we'll just do one region and that's uk self again we won't bother with remediation in this demo the message region chosen does not meet policy record for this subscription. Make sure everything's right there and create. Again, pretty quick. Go into assignments and uh, now we've got six and there at the bottom. Allowed locations, UK self. Yeah, I can see the details for it there. So again, let's test this one out. We'll do another logic cap. I like them. They're really quick and simple to set up. And again, we'll just create a new resource group to keep things simple. So let's try and put this one in UK West. Tags, we better put the environment tag in or it's going to complain about that as well. Okay, again, template deployment failed because of policy violation. And if we click on there, this allowed by policy, region chosen does not meet policy requirements for the subscription. And then we can see the allow policies allow locations UK self. So let's go back to basics, as they say. Select region and we'll choose UK self. We verify successfully and we can create. Go back to policy, allow locations. So we're fully compliant here by the sort of nature of the subscription. Everything's pretty much in UK self already. So we can see everything that's already in there and pre-existing is compliant. So that's good. So in the third demo, we're going to restrict which resources can be deployed. So this will control the types of visual resources that can be created by defining an allow list of permitted resource types. So, you know, your classic ones like virtual machines, storage accounts, and that sort of thing. One of the use cases for this is to help standardize your architecture. You're limiting which resources can be deployed, which can help to control costs in certain circumstances, but also ensure that any deployments done in your subscriptions adhere to your organizational standards. So I mentioned virtual machines as a potential entry for your allow list, but actual fact you may want to not include these especially if you're keen to modernize and move towards PaaS services removing the temptation or even the ability to deploy virtual machines can help with these aims so let's go back into definitions so we can see here allowed resource types you can also see we've got a policy definition for not allowed resource types depending on your scenario you could use i for all so if there were just maybe one or two that you definitely didn't want in the subscription but everything else is kind of all right you could maybe use that to block them or if you're pretty tight and controlled in terms of what you want to exist there you can just have a very small list of allowed resource types and use that policy instead we're going to use allowed resource types let's go into that sign policy choose our uh, subscription again i think for this one we'll mix it up a little bit getting bored of uh, logic apps now so we'll do a storage account this one and then this will cover 
which should cover sort of all the subtypes, so like blob, file, table and queue, etc. Give it a message. Great. So just to show you what happens when you don't create a storage account, we'll, we'll try and create another logic app. Just whiz through this. Create a new storage account. Okay, we do still have those other policies, so we'll make sure that we at least don't violate them. So we'll make sure it's in the right region and give it the environment tag. Okay, so that's failed. And as you can see, this resource must be of type storage account. So to show that it works, let's make sure that we can create a storage account. Give it a name. Okay, make sure it's the right region. Just do as your files, standard. There you go. That's all fine. Make sure we've got environment tag on there. Okay, so it's validated. Let's make sure we can create. There we go. That's complete. So that's done exactly as intended with the policy. Okay, there you have it. Three practical examples of how Azure Policy can bring order, consistency, and control to your cloud environment. From enforcing tags to restricting regions and resource types, these demos are just the tip of the iceberg. Azure Policy can do so much more. Automated remediation, compliance with regulatory standards, custom policies tailored to your business, and organization-wide governance at scale. So whether you're just getting started or looking to mature your cloud governance strategy, Azure Policy is the foundational tool you can't afford to overlook. If there are any other policy use cases you'd like to see demoed, or if you have any additional Azure policy insight, please drop a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.